Yeah, UFC 282 happened. Absolutely interesting card, I'd say. I think on paper, it was a far more controversial card than it needed to be. I think I myself thought it would just be a really fun card because the fights look really, really fun, but it ended up being a little bit controversial. Now, I started off um, the card because I always watch the prelims, but unfortunately, I did miss the first three. I missed the first three, so I can't really give you an opinion on the first three. Um, I can tell you I was really gutted for Joaquin Buckley versus Chris Curtis. I really wanted Joaquin Buckley to win, but essentially, um, Chris Curtis had a little bit more precision in him, even though Buckley was moving pretty well. He's boxing and he's striking because clearly improved i thought chris 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 curtis sorry chris christie chris curtis had a bit more power in these punches and obviously ended the way it did i thought the Ed, the the edmund shabazian versus the dashlan lungimbula which is funny because i'm sure this um this chap is from congo i'm sure he uh lobaka lingala this guy here right there right dushlim lingula and i've legitimately don't, don't think i've ever seen a guy more jacked than this man in the ufc he was jacked to the point where one of his legs looked a little bit deformed but it wasn't deformed it was just muscle you know when you're you know when you don't know what actual muscle looks like because you'd never be ripped and you start looking at the guy's leg he's like why does his leg look deformed it's like no it's not deformed you idiot that's an absolute tree trunk that's a ripped tree trunk but unfortunately all that tree trunk power didn't really matter because clearly Edmund Shabazian was the well more well-rounded and far superior MMA you know constituent what do you would MMA fighter I guess you'd call it right in terms of being all round in terms of his striking his grappling his distance um everything was all well where it needed to be and I think if anything this is a weird example to say especially somebody coming at it from like a casual point of view but I honestly do think this Edmund this Edmund sorry Shabazian fight and this Dashland guy Dausha guy was a little bit more important than people realize because I think this was another clear example that the sport has moved on you can't just be big and strong and win anymore like I said I think on Twitter the other day that uh, pace and power in UFC is gone or to put it bluntly being a scary big black guy doesn't do anything anymore I think now people are still a bit scared of flipping Dagestanians and Russians and stuff and maybe some Ukraine or whatever Eastern Europeans in general, right? Especially if you're a Serb or whatnot, or if you're from what's the other place? Um yeah, maybe if you're a Serb, that maybe is a good example. But I think for the most part, there's no real fear factor in the big, scary, black athlete looking type of guy. Because you might have the power, you might have the strength and all that malarkey, but if you don't have the skill if you don't have the tools in your arsenal, such as good grappling, good takedown defense, good striking, um, you know, you're dangerous from your back, you're dangerous from the top, like all these things, uh, you've got good flipping, you know, measurements, you've got good idea of that kind of, you know, where you are in the actual octagon and space and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't necessarily matter. And that's what you definitely saw with Edmund Shabazzian. Once he got past the freakishly crazy look of flipping Dalshin and how massive he is to look at, how intimidating it must be, I felt like he absolutely pieced him up and won really really easily towards the end anyway that flying knee was absolutely timed to perfection as well i love a good flying knee man just as the person is about to go down even to throw i think he was throwing maybe big overhand rights that he was trying to connect with and he was swinging for the fences with his punches a bit telegraphed because they'll come in all the way from the bottom but i think he went to go swing with his right and he's always he's always ducking his head down and i guess um edmund kind of got the got the read on that and as he's gotten his head down he came in with a flying knee and then finished it with punches it was really one of the best finishes of the night I really did enjoy that fight. Um, Jarzinho, Rosenstruck, and flipping Chris Dukakis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Number one, I was pissed off that my guy Jarzinho is now on prelims. Like, he used to be fucking main fight card cut type of guy, but now he's on prelims, maybe because the roster's overinflated or that's just the brutal nature of the UFC when you have a couple losses. But Jarzinho, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christos. He's got the weirdest body in the world, and as well, he kind of looks. He kind of looks like fat, strong, right? He kind of has tits, but kind of doesn't. Kind of has a belly, but kind of doesn't. And usually those people are the most dangerous, especially even someone like a Chris Dukakis who doesn't look like a, a UFC athlete in the slightest. But those guys, I think, are usually the most um, dangerous. That fight didn't last like, what? Well, yeah, 30 seconds, I'd say. I think it lasted 30 seconds. I legitimately went to the toilet, came back, and as they started and they were touching gloves, that's when it basically ended. He got hit a couple of times and Chris Dukakis basically saw stars, started spinning, went to the fence, and then by that time it was over over and Jarzinho absolutely rain blows on him absolutely destroyed him and took him out so that was pretty interesting to see Jarzinho fights are always like that anyway right they either end really quickly or he gets absolutely bludgeoned all the way through but that was pretty fun as well this one was absolutely hilarious 
because this kid is fucking 18, right? Raul Rosas Jr. versus Jay Perrin, who's not 18. He's a big man. I think he might be 30 or something. And I was thinking, watching a fight, like, UFC must be weird because there's fighting and there's men. To get beaten up by an 18-year-old must be way different than if you're a footballer and you get beat and you, you know, and this 18-year-old comes on like how Wayne Rooney did against Arsenal that time and he ends up scoring a hat-trick. It's probably way different if you're a fighter because you probably take it more personally. It's probably a bit more of a shame. But I don't think Jay Perry has any shame to have in this fight because this Raul Rosas Jr. kid might end up being a legit champion. He could end up being one of those undefeated, freakishly good champions because he is as well-rounded as I've ever seen a debut in the UFC for everything that's going on there. From his striking to his grappling, his wrestling, his takedowns. Like, so the submission was absolutely sweet. I enjoyed the entirety of that fight. I thought it was really good and shook at his skills in a really big way, in my opinion. So Jay Perrin should have no shame in the fact that he lost to somebody who legitimately might go on to be a champion um, winning, you know, fucking fighter in the end of time. But it will be quite cool if somehow down the line, if Jay Perrin's still around, they have a round two of this fight. But he absolutely took him out and smoked him pretty quickly and it was really one-sided so allow that then it comes into my favorite fighter this is currently my favorite fighter in the ufc roster currently my favorite fighter Ilya Tapurian. to me personally that mix of spanish spanish and georgian as well is just the perfect mix if you want to get a really fiery aggressive fighter to join the ufc especially from europe my god this kid is special really 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 special when it comes to striking he's got everything when it comes to boxing he's got it when it comes to grappling and jujitsu black belt he has got all of it in buckets and spades and he's not like those other guys people saying ufc oh yeah he's got really good wrestling he's a good but he's a really high level jujitsu guy blah 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 but all they do is that they enjoy flipping striking right and i understand that because maybe if you do jujitsu for too long you get bored of it but you actually want to put on some good fun fights and actually you know excite the fans or whatnot or have a highlight reel that is worthy of checking back some time. I understand it. But I do like the guys who are well-rounded and who, who just choose to strike. Like they say, look, if you want to go and do a grappling match or you want to do some fucking jujitsu on the floor, I can do that and I'll have you choke and I'll have you submitting very, very quickly. Or if you want to strike, we can strike and I'll absolutely knock you out. So I love that. And the fact that he's actually got a chin. We saw that in his previous fight. I forgot who fought. My memory kind of disturbs me, but or leaves me sorry. But I do remember him holding a couple of decent hooks and uppercuts and he did actually wobble. Or no, he actually maybe wobbled off a of one and came back. So clearly he's got the temperament and the ability to kind of withstand the shot. So that was pretty cool to see. I felt a little bit sorry for Bryce Mitchell. I'm a big fan of his. I think he's another essentially world round a fighter but again the the ufc is interesting in that way where i feel like as soon as you face somebody who's maybe a level above you suddenly you start to look human or you start to look very average he's striking bryce mitchell striking facing Ilya Tapuria. i felt was way worse because he was facing Ilya. Whereas everyone else he's faced prior, his striking hasn't looked that bad. His wrestling has looked really dominating. His top control and his pressure, everything is incredible to see, especially the pace that he keeps up. But then when you face somebody who's a level above, just an inch above you, suddenly you start to look human again. So that's the only thing I'm a bit sad about for Bryce Mitchell because I really do enjoy him. I think he's a really good fighter. I think he brings a lot of interesting you know, stuff to the card or, or to fights in general because he's so like grapply, wrestly, kind of dominant and what not and he really enjoys mauling people and, and dragging them all over the octagon but he stepped up in competition and he couldn't come close to Ilya and Ilya obviously is in a position where he can legitimately maybe call his shots and I'm not surprised that certain people are going to be avoiding him because he's a danger. Um, Drikas Duplassi versus Darren Till I would I'm going to hold it and say that I legitimately thought this was this would have ended sooner than it ended because they ended up going to the final round obviously Drake has ended up getting the win pretty early in the final round but I was legitimately surprised that Darren Till was able to survive as long as he did in there. And in general, it probably goes to show you that, again, the stepping level in quality goes to show that the UFC is definitely the league where all the best fighters are. Because for the most part, I think if Drakus Duplessis had anybody else in that position that he had Darren Till in, where he's kind of holding and, and trapping his arm, his right hand, and then he's got him against the cage and he's raining left hand um, hooks to his face to a point where Darren Till's half his face is swollen up from taking all those blows. Most people would have got knocked out. Most people would have maybe tapped from all the strikes. But the fact that Darren Till was able to survive and bear through that entire first round, maybe, 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 it's because it's Darren Till 
and because it's down till the f- the referee didn't want to call it straight away, knowing his record and what he's gone for. I'm not sure that's the thing, but who knows? That might be an actual situation. He might have saw down till moping around in the change room and whatnot. But I was generally surprised that he was able to withstand himself for that long. The only thing for me that was concerning watching a fight, especially down till, was that prior to him coming into the octagon, when he was in the uh, change room or whatnot, he looked really nervous like like a deer caught in head like nervous obviously i know it's his eye he's got that issue with his eye whatever it looks like a bit of a sty but he looked really scared in the flipping um change i know he wasn't scared but he had the look of somebody else a bit scared and a bit worried then when he came out and he started fighting he kind of looked quite confident but then as soon as he got into the grappling exchanges i was like what the hell has he been doing with hamza chimaev what do they spend time doing? This whole entire time that they've built up this incredible friendship and brotherhood and connection and he goes to his gym, they stay each other's houses, I'm, I'll probably assume because they go that far, right? Or they sleep in the gym together, all this sort of stuff. What the hell happened? Like, what was he actually practicing? Was he just Hamza Chimaev's like test dummy or something? Were they actually getting down? Like, what were they legitimately doing together? I don't understand it because I saw no discernible difference in Darren Till's flipping takedown defense not even his of or actual wrestling or grappling himself i thought his takedown defense was absolutely terrible for the most part without his strength and without him just trying to bully his way to standing up he didn't exactly strike me as somebody that had a lot of you know training with somebody who's clearly a high level wrestler or grappler like hamza chimaev so that was really odd to see in my opinion i thought drakus duplessis looked pretty shit even though I'm a big fan of his, and I think that he reminds me a lot of GSP, maybe because of the way he walks, he's got that knock knee thing, but he, ta- he he gassed out really quickly. But obviously, he's very dangerous in terms of being another well rounded fighter. He was able to, even when he's tired and his gas tank is empty, he still has the option if he wants to, to get his arm behind your neck and obviously choke you out. So that's obviously cool to see. But I was surprised with how ordinary he did look in there, legitimately ordinary. And the fact that he couldn't get Darren Till out there in the first round and knock him out maybe does speak to the fact that maybe his power is a little bit over um, overrated. It's not as maybe, you know, lights out as I would expect it to be. But still, you know, decent enough win for him. For Darren Till, if that was me, this is a bit harsh to say, um, even though he's a fellow countryman, I would retire. I think it's it's finished for him. He doesn't look like he has it anymore. He's kind of giving me vibes of that guy. Who's the mixed race guy? Before he got cut by the UFC. You could just tell in his eyes. He wasn't there anymore. He was just turning up for the check. Even Donald Cerrone kind of had the similar sort of look towards the end of his career. It's sad because Darren Till is still, still so young and obviously has still more to give. But I just think after having those defeats that he's had, the injuries that he's had, and maybe all the life issues outside the octagon, he's probably not in the greatest space possible now to actually try to compete at the highest level because you know someone like a Darren Till he's not going to be in the UFC just to be a number and to just put on fun fights he wants to win a belt he wants to be champion one day or a contender and he's not going to happen anytime soon he's just not on that level especially his grappling is just not that great his striking isn't even that amazing to really give him a shot in that kind of way so it's kind of a bit peak for him to be honest I'm not going to lie another interesting fight one of my fun ones was this one Santiago Possibon versus Alex Morono holy smokes Santiago Possibon was legitimately legitimately on the cusp of losing that fight and in the final round he pulls out an absolutely whole like I don't know like a flipping punch from the gods that right overhand that probably there's a lot of these kind of looping big right overhands actually in this fight am I mistaken it was a right I think it was a right hand that hit fucking Moreno in the face and it legitimately looked like it broke Moron, Morono's jaw but I don't think it did it just hurt him a lot because I've never seen someone's face like clench like his face clenched up immediately as he got punched like that must have hurt so bad and then obviously he rained the blows and kind of finished the fight but one incredible turnaround because Alex Morono was definitely winning that 